Let's take it to the next level. ESPN college football analyst Trevor Maddich joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. It is another Maddich Monday. Trevor, great to have you with us amidst all of the madness happening right now in the world of college football. Boy, there's uh, on and off the field. This season has has been uh, there's been a lot to chew on, hasn't there? <laughs> yes, that's putting it lightly. Let's start with this. How will BYU be affected in their game preparation given what's currently happening at the University of Missouri? I don't think they'll be affected at all because they will. They'll look at the tape. They'll run through practice. They'll go do their thing. I think Missouri is affected because they've been focused on everything but getting ready for a football game this weekend. So uh, from, from a BYU perspective, they, they still have to worry about what they normally have to worry about when you face Missouri, and that is uh, a defense that, even though the team as a whole has been struggling, the defense of Missouri is capable of stopping most teams cold. Missouri, is uh, this situation is certainly a news story that affects sports in a great way, especially BYU in the crosshairs this Saturday. So how is uh, this story being handled at ESPN right now, Trevor? Well, I think they're they're trying to stick with the facts. I think from what I've seen here, the coverage is about about what they see and what people say about it. And it's a it's a really touchy thing. And I think it's really easy to to lose sight of of which things are important in which realm. I know my job here at ESPN is not to talk about the core issues, it's to talk about how it affects the football team and what, what the football team needs to do in order to make sure that, that inside the program, from a football-only perspective, things continue to move forward. Follow him on Twitter, at T. Maddich. Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. Missouri just 4-5 and five this year. They have struggled. The offense has been anemic. Their quarterback, Matty Mock, has been all over the headlines for the wrong reasons. He's now out. Defense is good. So what kind of team do you expect to show up to play against BYU if and when that game happens on Saturday, Trevor? Uh, it, it'll be it'll be exactly what you said. I mean, BYU was basically stopped cold by San Jose State. That's a problem because Missouri, their defense is legit. I mean, and it's hard enough to play good defense all year long, which they've done. It's even harder when your offense is basically the the least productive in your conference, and it is. Missouri is, is just last in most offensive categories, and so. They don't control the clock. They don't force the opposing offense into predictable situations where they have to throw the ball to catch up. The defense of Missouri is just out there all by themselves, and yet they still are in the top three of most statistical categories. And the thing about defense is that it doesn't take the same kind of focus and precision and preparation as offense does. It still takes focus and precision. But offense is building. And it's hard to build. It's easy to destroy. Defense is destroying. And given the fact that BYU's offensive line is in disarray because of injury and that San Jose State was able to fully take advantage of that, I think BYU will have a hard time moving the ball and scoring. And so the critical thing for the Cougars in this game is to not make the mistake that gives that anemic Missouri offense a short field. In other words, if Missouri's going to score, you need to make sure it's after a nice long punt where they have to drive the field. If you give them, if you give them an easy field goal or a short field touchdown, it'll be awfully difficult to respond. And BYU certainly needs to play better than they did Friday night at San Jose State. The Cougars get to win 17 to 16. Uh, what impressed or concerns you about BYU's performance against San Jose State? Well, the defense impressed me a lot, BYU's defense. I thought overall they did a very good job. You've got to remember that Tyler Irvin is one of the best all-purpose yardage running backs in the nation. I mean, this is a guy that's averaging almost six yards a rush coming into this game. And, you know, BYU held him to three and a half yards. And that's important because that's what's going to have to happen in this game against Missouri. BYU's defense will have to carry the team. The offense, it's hard to grade. I can tell you this. I think that the receivers were fantastic especially Devon Blackman and Mitch Matthews. I mean, and Taron Hawk, they, they were beasting the ball. This is something that we talked about. And when there was not protection for Tanner Mangum, and he just sort of had to throw the ball up, and he, the receivers made him right an awful lot of times. And then that's an important thing. The question will be in this game, you know, well, two questions really. Can, can the offensive line solidify? Number one. And number two, uh, what lessons will Tanner Mangum learn from not having the protection Latin, you know, against San Jose State so that he can better adjust and deal with having to get the ball out more quickly against Missouri? 
BYU scores 17 points and beats San Jose State. Would 17 points against Missouri be enough to win on Saturday, Trevor? Yeah, I think so. 17 points and no turnovers. 17 points and no turnovers and no big returns allowed in the kicking game. If that's the case, then, yeah, I think 17 will be enough. Georgia went in there. Now, Georgia, you know, they, they've struggled, you know, this year at times. And, uh, but they went into Missouri with a veteran offensive line and a deep stable of running backs, and even without Nick Chubb. Sonny Michelle and Keith Marshall are very good backs. And they only managed nine points, nine points against Missouri. So, but that won the game. They won it 9-6. to six. And so that, that is what I expect from this game. We see so much basketball on grass in college football these days. We see the Big 12, you know, TCU, Texas Tech, and it's 55-52. to 52. And the team with the ball last wins and all that kind of a thing. I think what you'll see in this game is an old-school, old-fashioned tug-of-war where the bigger plays won't be the things that will necessarily win the game. It will be the bigger mistakes will lose the game. Because I don't know that either team will move the ball much of their own accord. Yeah, with that in mind, and I love the basketball and grass uh, phrase, by the way. That's fantastic. With that in mind, BYU played without three and a half, essentially four of its starting offensive linemen right. uh, last week. That's, that's a big concern that BYU needs Lapuajo, Johnson, Matthews, Karoma back in there this week. Well, you tell me. Do we know yet what their status will be? We, we think that Tijon Karoma will play. We were told it was just a one game. Uh, he would just miss the one game, but uh, Riker Matthews was limited, and then Louis Lapoal and Kyle Johnson. We're still waiting to hear on those on those guys. Well, well, the, the here's the problem: Missouri is is 15th in the nation in sacks. They've got 26 sacks, and remember, this is not supported by an offense that builds a big lead in the second half so that they know that the opposing quarterback will have to drop back and and throw in desperation. That way the defensive line and the blitzing and all that stuff can lay their ears back and just go with their hair on fire, not concerned about the run. Missouri has not had that advantage, and yet they still are 15th in the nation in sacks. This is why it'll be what it'll be in terms of the, the availability or how healthy the offensive lineman that may come back will be. That'll be what it is. Now it's on to basically two people, Tanner Mangum, a quarterback, and Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, to then deal with it, to create shorter passes to get that ball out quickly, to create more variations of the screen game so that there, there are things that can be done uh, without having to drop back deep in the pocket. And it will be up to the receivers again, the receivers again, to carry this team on their back because there will be throws off of Mangum's back foot because he will be hit as he throws. There will be throws that will be wobbly and high in the air. There, the receivers will have to, to beast the ball. They will need to beat Missouri the same way they beat San Jose State, and that's where the, the skinny guys on the perimeter need to be the guys with the big bulging muscles when it comes time to grab that ball out of the air. ESPN's Trevor Maddich with us on another Maddich Monday, BYUS and continuing live from Studio B. Trevor, how much will BYU benefit, if at all, from the fact that Missouri is dealing with off-the-field distractions right now? You know, it's hard to say because the, the easy answer is that Missouri's preparation, both from a coaching standpoint and especially from a preparation standpoint with the players, uh, will not be what it, what it should be. It just, it just won't be. But here's the other side. We don't know what it will mean for the players in the locker room in terms of them coming together as a team. We don't know if this will be a galvanizing force that will drive them together, and even though the X's and O's preparation won't be that much, their, their intensity and their love for each other will, will grow tenfold. And if that happens, that's a whole lot worse than having a full week of, of studying X's and O's in game preparation. So I don't know what Missouri team will take the field. They'll either be distracted, and BYU will be able to take advantage of mistakes because they'll make them, or they'll come out with all the love that you saw BYU come out with when they had adversity when uh, uh, Taysom Hill got hurt early in the season and everybody rallied, rallied around Tanner Mangum. Now, they are two completely different catalysts. They're, I'm not comparing an injured football player with the social issues that are at play at the University of Missouri. But inside the locker room, you have a similar uh, result at times, where teams can, can be driven together. And that love of teammate is something that must be earned through adversity. You can't just draw it up on the board. The degree to which that happens this week for the Missouri Tigers will determine how they come out on the field, and you'll know in about the first five minutes of the game. 
Trevor, Fresno State at BYU, we just announced, will be live on BYU TV, simulcast on ESPN3 via the Watch ESPN app. This is the first time that BYU TV has broadcast a Division I opponent for BYU football live to the world. What's the relationship like with BYU, BYU TV at ESPN? I mean, you're, you're in the headquarters, so how is it? Well, my my perspective of it is that that people around here really like BYU. They like what BYU stands for. They love the fact that BYU is typically an, an entertaining watch. And ultimately, that's what college football is. It's a TV show. And BYU, with, it's, with the LDS community all over the country, has got fans all over the country. It's not a regional team. It's a national team. But beyond that, people that are not LDS know from back in the Holiday Bowl days and the strings of All-America quarterbacks that if, if that Y is on the helmet when you scroll through games, you're about to see something that, that'll be entertaining and fun. And I think that's sort of the, the fundamental basis of the relationship here. And, and the more, you know, the more BYU is on, on anybody's air, I think the better it is for that network because fans are looking for this team. They're fun. Trevor, always a pleasure. We know you're a busy man and certainly appreciate the time today. Thank you. All right, thanks.